Okay, so this has been one of my most requested videos. How do I actually make my captions that I use in all my videos? And today I've got you covered. I'm going to walk you through exactly how to, that's right, create three of my text presets, all inside DaVinci Resolve. We'll start with the light sweep effect, then make our way into this sleek rise animation, and then finally this pop text animation, which I use in every single one of my videos. I'll be showing you the exact fonts I use, and more importantly, the exact process I go through when layering these effects together to make them feel just right. And trust me, you'll want to stick around till the end of this video, because I've got a surprise waiting for you that will seriously streamline everything I'm about to teach you today and save you hours of precious editing time on your next video. Okay, so once you've opened up a new project, head to the effects, and then we're just gonna to wanna to add a text plus. First thing I always do is I pick a font, and my top three fonts are Inter Black, Lobster, and Impact. Now you can choose any font you like, but my personal favorite is Inter Black, and I do use it in 99% of all my videos. So we're gonna add that, and then if you start off with the Rise animation, I'm just gonna re rename that to Rise, adjust the sizing just a little bit, and then here is where the magic happens, but here in the tracking, you want to reduce that just a little bit. So they're almost touching, but not quite. And you see what that does, it just makes it look much, much cleaner and just way clearer to read. I'm going to up the size just a little bit again. Okay, and then we're going to want to head into the shading. And if you scroll down just a little bit, we're going to want to select gradient. And you're going to see that that places a pre-made gradient for you. I'm just going to drag that just down just a little bit. And you see that makes a slight gradient. You can see that. You can play around a little bit. Just want a slight gradient. Now you can always go down here at the bottom and adjust the mapping aspect and the mapping size. We do want it to be very, very slight. Here we go. And then now we're gonna to wanna to make the actual animation. And to do that, we're gonna to wanna to head into the settings. And then we can do all of this right in the edit page. So if we just add some keyframes, one for the position, and then we bring that way down. And then we move just slightly, bring it back just a slight bit, and then we can up that. Now we can see that just makes an animation which isn't very clean, but I'll show you how to ease that in a second. Okay, so head into keyframes and then you're going to want to enable the Y because that's what we animated. Go back to keyframes, you're going to want to select everything and then press on ease in. And what we can do is we can just adjust the spline just a little bit so it's even smoother. You can see it's a little bit fast, so what we can do is we can drag that and then just move it slightly to the right. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to scroll down to the composite and then we want to keyframe the opacity as well. So like that. And then move just slightly again and then up the opacity. And we're gonna see that creates this very, very smooth rise animation that appears in. Now what you can also do, and this is how I layer my captions, is you can duplicate that. And then after you've duplicated it, if we name this preset. Then we're gonna see that animates. If we bring that just a little bit closer. Okay, now if you go back to the settings and then scroll back to the keyframe, you can bring that a little bit down, you can obviously adjust the size, bring it back up. And now because we made this gradient earlier, you can see that there's this nice separation, and it's not all just blending in. And to make that even clearer, what we can do is we can add a drop shadow, if we scroll up to the effects menu, search for drop shadow and scroll down to the open effects and now we can add the drop shadow right onto the preset now we can play around 
with the drop angle bring it down increase the blur just slightly so here is a way you just want to play around with it reduce that a little bit and now we can see the scroll in so that is before then that's after just as this slight separation as well if we'll go back and that's pretty much it for the rise animation so we're going to want to do the exact same thing with the pop animation so if we just duplicate this one once more it's option and drag on mac and we're going to use the same template but what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings and then we just reset all the keyframes and then to make the pop animation just rename this to pop just so everyone knows what we're doing okay so here is where we'll just be using the opacity keyframes. So if we scroll to the to the beginning, add a keyframe and then reduce the opacity, and then go scroll three frames, up the opacity just a little bit, another two frames, lower the opacity, one, two, three, four, another four frames, up it, two, up it again, another two, increase it a little bit. And then three all the way down and then two all the way to the top and you can just be random very random with it and you'll see that this is the effect now it's a bit long you can always shorten it so that's what I'm gonna do so I'll scroll back to this one remove this keyframe remove this keyframe and let's see yes yeah, so that's much cleaner now we don't even have to go into the keyframes because it works just like this but we can always go into the keyframe tab and then select everything press on ease and ease out but as you can see that doesn't really do much you might as well just keep it as it is and that's pretty much it for that pop animation you can always mix and match with these so as you can see these effects look very very clean when put together and yeah for the final animation that is the shine or light sweep animation where you're going to want to be working inside the fusion page just because it is a slightly more complicated effect we won't be able to replicate it just right inside the edit page so to begin hover over to the effect tab then search for fusion comp scroll right up then drag it size doesn't really matter but press on it go into the fusion and as you can see right now we can't see anything so drag another text plus this time inside the fusion page and then we're gonna drag it and place it right into the media app. now let's type something in this case shine and change it to into black again you guys can just tell this is my favorite but just up the size again the tracking just a little bit okay here's where it gets just a little bit fun make this full screen so it's easier to work with back into the inspector so head into the shading and very similar thing we're going to do here press on gradient but we're just going to delete everything bring this right into the middle and then in this case but you can choose any color color we're just going to want to pick a nice bright color in this case green so I select that and then I'm just going to make it bit darker always duplicate this and drag it across just like that okay and then what we want to do is we can change the mapping angle so it's a little bit diagonal and then you can either select full image or text but in this case I'm just going to select full image and as you can see that makes the gradient across the full image and then if you scroll down again, we can play around with the mapping aspect and also the mapping size. Now what I like to do here as well is just up the X and the Y. Don't worry about it right now. We're just then going to up the glow just a little bit and then reduce the blend all the way. We just want that slight, slight glow. And as you can see, this creates this glow into the bright areas of the text. You can play around with it again. Don't push it too much, but this looks pretty good to me. 
And so that's all done for the actual text itself. So here for the fun part, to add the light sweep. So what we do is we add a soft glow. Um, that's just gonna affect the whole image for now. But here is where we just add a rectangle mask. What we can do is we can lengthen it and then just make it shorter. Also rotate it. And after rotating, we can increase soft edge just a little bit. Again, play around with the glow controls to your liking. Don't push it too much. It'll be very quick anyway, so we won't even be able to notice it, but keep the glow size down. It's pretty good to me. And as you can see, as we move it, the rectangle mask moves with us. So let's animate that as well. If you scroll all the way to the start of the clip, drag the mask to the left, and then we want to keyframe the center or the position and then scroll down a little bit and then drag it all the way to the right. And you can see that line it means it's animating. If you view it, again, it's pretty slow, it's pretty boring, but here is where the spline comes in once again. So go over to the spline, view everything using that button right here. And then we can select this button and then right click go over to ease and then press on our cubic. What's that gonna do is it's gonna make it faster at first and then slow as we go. So we can adjust that so it's a little bit faster. So stop. You can see that animates a very smooth light sweep. You can make it a little bit slower and the way we do that is if you drag everything then press on this button right here now we can adjust the length it's very good to me and here is where the secret source comes in but drag this across to the right just so select this if we add a merge and then we also add a edge detect mode what we do is we disconnect that and then we add it into the foreground input and the edge detect into the background input. Nothing shows up just yet, but we connect the text onto the edge detect into its input and you'll see that we get this very nice edge around it. Now if we select grayscale edges, that's going to make it white. Here is where I would up the gamma just a little bit, otherwise you'll see that it just spills everywhere. So up the gamma all the way, play around with the edge width just a little bit, just like that. And we can play around with the brightness. But don't push it too hard, keep it minimum. And here's where we can just duplicate the rectangle from earlier, paste it, and then place it into the mask input of the edge detect. And as you can see, as the rectangle mask moves across, it will also animate this edge with it. It just makes this nice shine, as if it's like sort of a shimmer. So again, you can go across and play around with everything. I like to go into the soft glow and then just decrease the glow size just a little bit. We find it's cleaner like that. And boom. Now you can always go back here and then play around with the edge width just a little bit so it's very, very subtle. You can always go around into rectangle as well, adjust a soft, soft edge, but I do think it's perfect as it is. And here's a nice trick if you do want to change the color, but you don't want to go through and adjust all the gradient settings manually what you can do is after text one you just add a color correct you this and then here is where we can play around with the hues 
we can go this nice blue and also up the saturation just a little bit and boom now we have a different color that you can reuse again what we can do is we can layer this with some other ones as well for example the pop or in this case it'll look nicer with one of the rise ones so if we bring that across then wait for it to animate it is very slow because it's being very very laggy right now but here's a trick I'll show you as well so if it is very laggy like this what you want to do is you want to go up to playback go down to quarter and then in render cache you want to go down to smart you'll see that it will just add these red bars you want these red bars to turn green and it will animate very smoothly and then if you go up here select show all video frames you can always play through it will play very very slow at first but it will render the frames as it grows through them so we wait a bit boom now we can replay and we see we've layered them obviously that doesn't look very good but here is where we go back to the keyframes again go back to the last one no, not this one go back to the last one and then change it you can even change the size go back to settings lower that just a bit and boom they have this very very nice animation that you can use in short form long form whatever you like and that's exactly how i go about creating these attention grabbing captions that i use in all my short form content now remember that surprise i told you about at the start of the video well i've actually put together a pack of 14 customizable text presets all inside davinci resolve with a one click install you just drag and drop them into your timeline customizing everything from the color to the animation speed and you're gonna like this part i've kept all the fusion nodes accessible so you can go through and study them for yourself so the download link is going to be down in the description and if you dm me on instagram i'll personally send you a discount code for supporting me in the release of this drop so what are you waiting for let's get to creating